Well, joining me is the WSK Super Master Series champion for 2022. Alexander Bondarev is with me. Alexander, great to see you. I bet that sounds pretty good at the start of the season. Yeah, of course it does. It does, especially like the second, the first championship of the season, and I already won it, so it it does feel very nice. Coming into the main body of the season, we've obviously had a few events now. We had the Champions of the Future Winter Series where you were really strong at the front and you've won the WSK Super Master Series to start the year. Just how much has that boosted your confidence coming into the main body of the European season? Of course, when you are at the front, uh, it, it raises your confidence. And every time you, you, for example, win the quali or win the race or finish on the podium, it, all the time is, it raises your confidence and uh, you, you stop worrying about things like uh, do, do you have the pace and all those things. And you start like pushing yourself to, to the limits already in the European races. And you've obviously had a very difficult start to the season. Uh, last year, obviously, you were racing uh, in this championships uh, as well in OK Junior, but you were racing as an independent. You were racing as a privateer, which is a very different task compared to now when you're racing in one of the top teams in the sport. Just how tough was it last year when you were racing basically within a family operated unit, two or three people maximum, and you were having to go up against the big teams? Yeah, uh, last year we were driving as a privateers and it was a really important year for me because the they team, my family team, my coach, my mom and my grandpa, they teach me how to drive already in OK Junior. So this year I can already go to like a big team like RFM and then already be ready to, to show results from the start of the season. And that year was really, really important. And I think that every driver should do that because if you go to a big team not prepared and not having like some already experience in that class it's it's really difficult already because you have a, a teammates that already are on the second year of uh, of okay junior and it's going to be really hard also mentally so last year it was really important to drive as a private tier and then we, we also got some podiums some uh, to top five, some top tens, and uh, it, it also it felt really nice uh, coming to the first testing of the season and feeling prepared. And you came in this year for 2022, and you not just joined any team, you've joined Ricky Flynn Motorsport, where everything is already well established. They've won multiple titles in the last five years. They had a new chassis technically this year with the Lando Norris Kart brand. So obviously everything's been a little bit of a reset button within the team. Just how big a change has it been to come into one of the best teams in the grid? It, it was a big change because from family team, it's like three people working for only one driver. And then in uh, Ricky Flynn Motorsport, you have nine drivers in, in both categories, junior and senior. So it, it, it's kind of... Uh, like already a better system because uh, they, they, they already work at the front like for many many years they won multiple european and world titles so they already have uh, some experience of uh, being at the front and we felt like our fan was like a really good, good team for the season for a season that we are uh, planning on winning most titles and you've come straight into this year and only already had about five or six outings within OK Junior, within the Ricky Flynn Motorsport squad, and you're already at the front. You've come straight in to the team and you're already getting pole positions in time qualifying. You're winning heats. You're running in the top five. Are you surprised by just how quickly you've been able to get to the front of the field in your second year and your first within a team like this? Yeah, uh, it, it was very surprising. Of course, on the, on the first race of the season in WSK Supermaster Series, I won the race on track, but then I got a bumper penalty for the last uh, lap move. And uh, it already gave me confidence because I just came into the team. I did like three t -t testing and then I, I'm already uh, able to finish like in, in, the, uh, in the top three, P1, P2, P3. And it, it gives a lot of confidence and seeing that I'm always at the front in every I'm trying to be at the front in every race of the season it it gives like it, it is very surprising because uh, uh, last year we weren't that that fast but then we came to Ricky Flynn Motorsport and we started going like really really fast and also with the one engines that are really, really good as well we are able to run at the front uh, in every race now, this is a, a difficult subject to talk about, so we won't 
spend too much time on it. But in 2022, obviously, being a very proud Ukrainian and racing and competing on the world stage, I mean, you are one of the few people who is essentially flying the flag for your nation on the world stage of competitive sport and never mind motorsport. And to come out as a champion in your first year when everything that's going on is going on, how big a motivator is that to really continue the conquest and to just keep pushing uh, to get as many victories and as titles as you can over the year? It must be quite a big thing for you to be able to carry the expectations of your nation behind you. No, I mean, it's really hard to see that I'm only one of the only ones in in the in, in karting right now dr driving under the Ukrainian flag because everyone is staying at home in Ukraine d d during this hard time of war. And all, all the tracks are ru ruined in Ukraine. The track where I, uh, I grew up in Kiev is ruined. So it feels really bad to see how, like, what a hard time you Ukrainians are having right now. And uh, I'm trying to win as many races right now to, to at least uh, uh, raise their motivation to, to go and fight and win the war. And when you won the title in uh, Supermasters, I mean, what a glorious moment. You got to go out there on the podium with the Ukraine flag. And it was a wonderful, wonderful moment for you and for the whole team as well. And they really have got behind you as well. The whole team are supporting you and pushing you through this year. It's, it, it's like a huge family that has embraced you on board. How big a support is that for you to keep pushing at the front? Yeah, especially after the second round of the Supermaster Series in Lonat, the war started and uh, it, it made me feel even more responsible for for my driving on, on the world stage. And uh, my front is carding, so I'm trying to, to, to win on my front and then hope for Ukraine to win also in the war. Now, this weekend coming up is obviously the European Championship kickoff at Portimao in Portugal. A couple of weeks ago, you were there for Champions of the Future, which was the warm up to the European Championship. And you came straight into time qualifying with the fastest time, not just in your group, but over everybody. So that must have been the most phenomenal kickstart in terms of your preparation for the European Championship. And there was one heat over the entirety of the heats that you didn't win and you got the podium in the final. So just how confident now are you that you can do a similar job coming into the European Championship and is there a chance that you can go even better and could you win the opening round of the Championship? Yeah, uh, of, of course in the Champions of the Future uh, I got uh, Poland time qualifying and that's my my first pole in OK Junior and it felt really nice. I got P2 overall in Sarno in the last round of the Supermasters and uh, like it made me even more like um, like it made me want it even more. So uh, in 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 Portimao when I came there, I knew that yes, I I have to go P1 in qualifying now because I didn't do it in any race in my time in OK Junior. So uh, I did everything. I, I won heats. I got pole in time qualifying in uh, in the Champions of the Future. The only thing that I didn't do is I didn't win. So um, that that's my goal for the Europeans. And what was really interesting, you know, when I got to speak to you in between heats when we were out in Portimao is that you weren't getting excited about it. You weren't really feeling like the job was done, even when you were fastest in qualifying, when you were winning heats, when you were showcasing your true ability, you weren't really letting it get to you. Are you the kind of racing driver then that you just soak it all up? You don't really let yourself get excited about things until the job is done. Or do you feel that you're still building as a driver? You're still trying to really feel your way around the cart and how quick you can be? No, uh, in in Portimao, in between the heats, I wasn't getting too excited because I, I already won heats before and I, I got really excited about it. I had too much confidence and I was like, yes, I, I'm, I, I, I'm able to win. And then uh, when I came to the race, I just got too nervous. And then I just, I didn't do like as much as I can. And the same thing ha happened in the Champions of the Future. I got a really poor start because uh, Kirill Zitiev overtook me from P3. And uh, from that point, I couldn't really get the temperature into the tires, like the one that I did in the super heat where I pulled away by two and a half seconds. And uh, th th that was the main problem. So. My goal for the Europeans is just learn from my mistakes and uh, not, not the same mistakes there. Now, 2022 is going to be a difficult year anyway, because we have four rounds of 
the European Championship on four very different circuits as well uh, over the course of the year. But then the World Championship this year is taking place in Sarno, which is a circuit that you know really well and you've had good success there. So obviously the European Championship is going to be very hard to win, to be that consistent over the four weekends. But does that prepare you, do you think, for a genuine shot at the World Championship later this year when you are building up to you know, be the strongest that you can be. And then you'll go and take all of that knowledge and all of that experience and data to a circuit that you know really well to fight for the world championship. Yeah, uh, the, the, the world championship is taking place in Sarno and it's one of my favorite tracks. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. But it's also not one of the tracks that is held only like one or two races uh, every every year. It's like we are going to have more, multiple WSK races there uh, to, to prepare for. For the world champs, and not, uh, uh, of course, the tires, the Vegas, are are uh, are on both championships, so it's gonna help us a lot to prepare. And, and uh, of course, yeah, uh, the, uh, the whole season is gonna be ha- like the, the preparations to, to to then everybody is gonna prepare themselves throughout the year to then uh, uh, like tr- try to show their mark in the world champs. And of course, last year you had, you know, good experience of running at the front of an FIA championship because not only were you a junior as an independent, but you also raced and was very successful in the Karting Academy Trophy, which is an amazing uh, competition. And you got to fly the flag for Ukraine on the world stage in equal equipment to everybody. What was that like as an experience, you know, not having a team, essentially, but being there fighting in equal equipment with drivers that you'd never met before, you'd never raced before, but being able to represent your country on the world stage? Of course, the, the, the three races of the Academy Trophy last year were only a- Adria was a track that I know and Krukushinstad and Wackersdorf were completely new tracks for me. So uh, I had to, it was a really good experience for me because uh, this year it's only so the third round of the Europeans in Christianstad. So I'm going to have a bit more experience there. And Christianstad is not like one of the tracks there that uh, are like multiple championships in. We're going to have only the champions of the future there and then the Europeans. So uh, it's, it's going to be like a really good preparation also how we were in the academy to, to this year already in the Europeans. And I was talking with some of the Ricky Flynn mechanics the last time out when we were together in Portimao uh, about you. And they were saying, you know, the difference between you as a driver last year compared to you as a driver this year has been staggering. And the team really want you to progress. They are really behind you, pushing you to try and go faster and faster. And they can see that there's a real superstar breaking out. What would you say? is the thing that's really changed from last year to this year where have you improved as a racing driver and where are you getting better all the time yeah uh, i think that i, I improved the most at uh, being calm at the front because last year my main problem was that i, I went out in front and then i couldn't keep up the same pace as uh, i did when i was behind someone and this year, as I'm driving always at the front, I have a bit more experience of driving at the front. So uh, I have m- more time to, to to study how to drive alone and to keep the same keep up the same pace as I am when I'm behind someone. So the, that, that was like the, the biggest thing, because even last year in our family team in Sarno, I led uh, like some heats. And then as soon as I get out in front and have a gap, then everyone is starting to catch up to me because I started to get nervous. I start to think like, oh my God, they're catching me up to me. And th- this year it's uh, completely different because I felt, I start feel, th- started feeling more confidence uh, driving at the front. And th- th- that's, I think the main change. So coming into this year, there's obviously quite a few drivers within Ricky Flynn that can challenge for the championship. You've obviously got the likes of Thomas Strauven and Maciek Ladij that you're working with his teammates and Salim Hanauer is also very quick. But over the first three months of the season, I think you've probably been the most consistent over the course of the first part of the season. So how do you maintain this now? How do you go to the European Championship being able to stay within the top five for those four weekends to set up a challenge for the championship? The main thing why I won the, the Supermaster Series was because I was the, the most consistent of all the drivers. Because I was always I was always in the top five throughout the first three rounds, so that gave me a big point gap coming into Sarno, and that m- made me like go n- n- not p- pushing too much, j- just trying to not like 
stay uh, just trying to stay out of trouble and not get into any collision and that, that's what got me the title but in the first three rounds i was pushing like crazy because it was the first time that i was like able to, to drive at the front so it was it, it felt really good and, and of course in the first round after the penalty i got p4 and then round two p2 then in la Conca, i won and so no, i got taken out in the final but it's still it, it felt really good getting the uh, the championship so it sounds fantastic. I know there's hundreds and thousands of people out there who want to see you succeed and want to see the Ukraine flag on the top of the podium and as many FIA karting events as possible this year. So we wish you all the best. Good luck with it. And hopefully we will hear an awful lot more about Alexander Bondarev over the course of the season. Good luck. Thank you.